So friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Unto him be honor and glory forever and ever. And into his church, may we always be that light of his love. So I have a question for you, real simple. I want you to come back with the first words that come to your mind when I say this, you think what, okay? First thing, Secretary of State, Department of Motor Vehicles. What's the first word you think about? Boring. What's another one? Waiting. What's another one? Jesse White, okay, but it's Department of Motor Vehicles. Getting a car sticker. Late. What else? The law. Yeah, how about this one? Bad pictures. Right? Okay. So, uh, let me ask you. Here's, that's number one. Number two. Your dentist's office. Friendly, okay, okay. I got one of those too. What else? Pain, yeah. What else? Expensive, yeah. What else? Waiting, yeah. What else? Takes care of your teeth, yeah. Something you gotta do, like, it's good for you. But there's that good for you, and there's that, there's that level of pain, right? And who loves that? Who loves that? Okay, here, here's, here's uh, number three. Your grocery store. Confused. But Dave, is that every place you go? <laughs> They re rearranged everything, you know. So, so, but you're right. yeah. But, but, you know, I go into a different grocery store, and and I went to Sam's Club yesterday in Addison. I usually go over here in in uh, Streamwood. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. Okay. So confused. Okay. What's another one? Expensive. Yeah. Food necessary, maybe. Yeah. Abundance. We got lots of choices. You go to many places in the world, grocery item is, do you want rice or beans or rice or beans? <laughs> yeah, we got choices. Okay. You notice nobody said love. Do you love the DMV? You love to hate the DMV, okay? Do you love the dentist's office? Do you love your grocery store? Now, you may love your grocery store over and against the other grocery store that I don't go to. But nobody said, why, why don't we say love about these things? You think about the DMV, and, and you know it's necessary and it's good, and it's the law, and it will help you and others. And frankly, I've found when I've gone to the DMV, uh, most people working there respond to kindness. And so I, it's kind of, you, you, you figure it's a, I wouldn't say a necessary evil, but you got to take some time off and go do your business to get your sticker. Uh, with the dentist office, I have a great dentist office. We have fun walking in. We have fun walking out. It's that in-between time, you know. And I found I I, I really learned. I, I've never had this in my life. I've learned to love um, nitrous oxide because you put it on and and you, when it hurts, you go ow. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of got this thing. But, but you go to the dentist quite often when you've got that pain. So the DMV is because the law says so. 
The dentist is because when you take a sip of coffee, it hurts, or you got a cracked tooth, or you pulled your crown out. It's something necessary that you did. The grocery store is necessary another way. If you want to eat, you got to do it, but, but you're going to have kind of fun in a grocery store, unless you're confused, you know, but, but you're going to have joys and look at other things, but, but it's really kind of necessary. We don't love these things, though. Do you think of the church as the DMV, your dentist office, or your grocery store? Necessary because of the law. A place to go when you're in pain and need healing. A place where you need to get fed on a regular basis to sustain life. You know, when God thinks about the church that he created, none of those things are things he thinks about. We think about it. He thinks in a way different way. Did you hear what, what, what Jesus said in our gospel lesson? The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. As I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me. You can't come where I'm going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. John chapter 13. A new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And your love for one another will prove to the world you're my disciples, that you follow me. It is in love. Now, there's a bunch of love that I have for places. Like, there's a restaurant I love. I go to it on Fridays with my wife, and I love it because there are a whole bunch of reasons. One of them is they serve me well. I know the, the, the staff there. In fact, when I walk in, if my booth is not ready, the person at the front says, Pastor Mueller, I'm terribly sorry, number 10 is not available yet. Would you like to wait? Or would you like to be seated someplace else? They know what I like. They come right away with coffee. They've got a, 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 a meal that I like. And they know me well enough there that, that when I've had my sec, poured my second cup of coffee, they come with a decanter of decaf. And I've been going there long enough. It's great. I love that place. Is that love or is this love? Nora, my three-year-old granddaughter, came for her first sleepover. Picked her up, brought her out. She's coming to Gammy's and Papa's house. And of course, she comes running in and we get the clothes off and the, you know, the, the shirt off or the coat off and the boots off and the shoes off and running around and she's excited to go around and after about three or four minutes there's this little voice that I heard and she looked up at me with these brown eyes and says Papa will you play with me I mean I, I can I'm getting teary now thinking about it and I sat there, and we played the dumbest games in the world. <laughs> she doesn't do it right. She doesn't understand it. We tried Candyland, and it's just spin the thing and move it wherever you want to, and, and um, who cares who wins. And, but, and, it, and it was 45 minutes of bad Candyland. But it's that relationship with my granddaughter. Of course I'm going to do that. Wouldn't you? So which is love? Where I'm served well and they know me? Which is love? Where I serve someone else and love them? And that's the big challenge we have in America when we think about church. The big C church, the whole Christian church on earth, and the little C church, this congregation and others. 
we make it about things other than love. Did I like the music? Was it warm enough? Did you get the salt down soon enough? Do I have my seat? Can I hear? Did you play an instrument I like or, or a hymn that, that I can sing? I mean, it's all kinds of other things. When God created this for relationships, it, we can remember that by, by this symbol, this sign that we have of, of the cross, which exemplifies the Christian church on earth. That, that, that upward spur, the relationship between God and man that God created because we could not get up to him. He came down to us. And the message, the story of Jesus is all about that. The Son of God coming down into this world to redeem his people and to love us up. You think about stories of Jesus with the woman at the well or the rich man that came to him. And Jesus, it says, I had compassion on him. Or when he talked to the crowds, it says he had compassion for them. It's, it's, it's this crazy word, splachna. It means that you're, it's a Greek word. It means that you're, like your guts are all turned upside down. You're, you're upset. You're feeling it in, in your gut. To have compassion for them because they're like sheep without a shepherd. God created that relationship in Jesus Christ and we celebrate that every day. But the relationship that he created was not just a relationship like this. It's a relationship like this. The whole Christian church on earth and each one of us individually. Now, I have to tell you, it's a very inconvenient image. One of our staff members is famous for saying, and, and okay, in, as a joke, this is as a joke. This would really be a great church around here if, except for all those dang people who come. We'd have all the projects, all the programs, all the, the it would be clean. It would be a lot less work except for all those people. The same thing. This would be a great school except for all those kids. And what happens is we, we hear from Satan himself those sirens which call us to destruction and, and are calling us saying, well, well, yeah, I understand that. Because the church, the big C and the little C church is filled with dang sinners. People who hurt one another and make mistakes and I can't hear and you stepped on my toes. People who, who are, are rude or insistent. People for whom love is not the center of what they're doing. I was talking with the leader in our, in our denomination uh, the other day, we had some business, and we were talking about one of the challenges. And it says, one of the greatest challenges we have, and this is for us pastors. There are many pastors in our denomination and every other denomination who are in love with the study of God's Word and really find it intriguing how, how this connects with this and explaining all the intricacies and all the details and, and all that. They want to explain all that, and they find great joy in, in doing it. They just don't like people. And, and, so, and so the Word of God is not tracking with the Word of God made flesh. How, how did God tell us about this? It, it's real simple in in. in 1 John chapter 2, dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment for you. It's rather an old one you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment to love one another is the same message you heard before, yet it is all so new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment. 
and you are also living it. For the darkness is disappearing, the true light is already shining. If anyone claims, I'm living in the light, but hates his fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. Friends, the inconvenient truth or the inconvenient reality of the church is that all of us are in this together. And it's about L-O-V-E. You know, we, we talk about this you know, our mission statement is very clear. Connecting people with Christ, community, and our calling of servanthood. The longer version is connecting people in real, loving relationship. Real, loving relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, with each other in a contagious Christian community, and with their calling of servanthood in the world. Or, or you might say it even s- simpler, in another way, not just Christ communion and calling. What about this one? Love God, love others, serve the world. Would that be something that you'd love to do? Love God, love others, serve the world. Could you do that in a way that I do it with my grandchild? Love God, love others, serve the world. Now the problem is, this concept, the world goes like this, make me. They're thinking about the church as the DMV. The world goes like this, ooh, I got a pain, heal me. They're thinking about the church as the dentist. Or, feed me. They're thinking about the church as the grocery store. Not the gathering of people under the cross of Jesus Christ with the message of love in word and deed. Do justice, love mercy, Walk humbly with our God. That's us. And what we're going to be talking about in the next bunch of weeks is what it means to be us. Because frankly, we need, all of us need to be apologists for the church. You know what an apologist is? It's not somebody who's saying, I'm sorry. An apology is an explanation of why. Now, we've turned it into, I'm sorry, instead of an explanation of why. We need to be apologists for what Christ has created by being his light and love. We need to be apologists for what Christ has created by speaking his grace and truth, and love. We need to be apologists for the Christian church by stopping the dang gossip and conflict which comes out of nothing. Because what the world sees is you guys don't have your act together. You can't even love each other. Why would I want to be a part of that? It sounds like more like going to the DMV or the dentist to me. Like, you ought to, you must. It sounds like judgment. And when someone comes to me and, and, and says, well, I don't go to church because the church is full of hypocrites. My constant response, I've done this for years, is very simple. Well, then you should come so we can have one more. Because yes, we are hypocrites. The good that I would, I don't do. The evil I don't want to do, I do that all the time. Oh, unworthy man that I am, who's going to save me from this? Jesus Christ will save me. 
Because the reality is, is I will always, as a pastor, fail you. I will always, as a pastor, fail everyone here because I, as a pastor, fail myself all the time. And what we need to do is just recognize we are just, we are lost sinners without hope unless it is with Jesus Christ. We're lost sinners unless we're connected with his word in Jesus Christ. We're lost sinners unless we've received his baptism. We're lost sinners unless we, we, we join together and become one through the communio, to be one with one another, to, to have the communion of the saints as we receive his body and blood, which is being shared across the nation and around the world this day in this kind of constant, constant celebration of his sacrifice for us. And our reception in, in bodily form of his body and blood given and shed for us. It changes people. It can change people. If you're not going to cross your arms and say, yeah, but this is the DMV. Yeah, this is the dentist. This is the grocery store, and I don't love any of those things. We, friends, got to change an attitude and help people find the love for the church. And you know how we do that? It's real simple. Be and live, love ourselves. Is there somebody to whom you need to apologize? Ask for forgiveness? Or are you perfect? And it was always the other guy's fault. Is there somebody that you forgot, like, I have an apology to make to my son-in-law, Norm. I missed, I sent a, a note, I sent a card, but I missed calling him on his birthday. And you'd expect that a, that a, a, a father-in-law would call you on your birthday. And I didn't. It just, the day got away from me. I saw it on my calendar. And by the time I thought about it, it was last night. And I've missed it by a couple of days. So today he's going to get a call from me. I'm going to apologize to him and be love and tell him he's important because he is. Not just as the one who's created uh, some beautiful grandchildren, the best in the world. But as a man who has loved my daughter and who is leading his family and will lead the next generation, because I'm not going to be around here for forever. He's got to be the leader. And I want to commend that to him and encourage him and let him know that I, I do love him. I just forgot the telephone call. You got something like that you got to do today? If you don't, give me five minutes with you and I'll f help you find something. Because all of us, we leave a, a wake behind us and the wake isn't always good. What we need to be is leaving a wake of forgiveness and grace and love. And so in these next couple of weeks, what we're going to be doing is talking about being loved by connecting with others, being loved by serving others, being loved by giving others, and being loved in the church by sharing this love with others. I want to encourage you to think about this and pray about this. And, and to write something down. What is it that I love about my church? 
And if you can't think of anything, then let's talk. Because there must be some way that we as a community of believers have hurt you. That's not God's intention that you should be separate from from his church, his body. He calls each one of us to love him, love others, and serve the world. So let's pray for that. Would you find the prayer on the front of your takeout? Let's rise and pray this about the church. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon the church that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let me pray for you. Oh, Lord God, I pray your Holy Spirit on each one of us. Where we have erred, as you say in Galatians 6, if, if one of us is caught up in a sin, those who are spiritual need to restore them gently. Help us be gentle restorers for one another. Let us be grace and truth and strength and love so that the world may know you are real and you live here in your church, in and through and among us. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all God's children said, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. You have received a blessing. Go be a blessing and live as a child of the light.